On today's menu, a steamy recipe that's absolutely delicious. Classic congee. Five pieces of garlic, finely chopped. One onion, finely chopped. So kanji is one of those recipes that I quite enjoy making differently every time and I feel like every time you're cooking in the kitchen is an opportunity to try something new as well. Peel about 200 grams of daikon radish and finely chop. One cup long grain rice. Rinse and drain the rice. Stock pot. Medium heat. Two tablespoons avocado oil onions and garlic saute for 8 to 10 minutes that really smells amazing cooking kanji is really the labor of love but boy is it ever delicious Rice. Saute for a few minutes. You can really smell the toastiness of that rice. Just adds so much delicious flavor. Turn the heat up to medium high and add two cups of water. Two generous tablespoons miso paste. Stir until most of the water has evaporated. Two cups of water. Stir. When the porridge has thickened again, add another two cups of water. 
continue to stir. If the boiling becomes too aggressive, you can take the pot off the heat to stir. As the water evaporates, the rice should continue breaking down. Add another two cups of water. Continue to stir. I absolutely love making congee because you just start off with some really simple, humble ingredients and then it just transforms into something completely different. 150 grams shimeji mushrooms. One cup water. Stir and cook for another four to five minutes. Place the lid on the kanji and set it aside. Don't worry about the kanji because that will stay super hot. Now, the best part about kanji is actually the toppings. This is where you can get really creative. Pat dry about 200 grams of extra firm tofu and place it in a bowl. Use a fork to mash the tofu into a crumble. Non-stick pan. Medium heat. Half cup peanuts. Toast the peanuts for a couple of minutes. Two tablespoons white sesame seeds. Toast for another minute. Set the peanuts and sesame seeds aside. Pan back on medium heat. Drizzle of avocado oil. Tofu crumble. Saute for three to four minutes. One tablespoon soy sauce. One tablespoon dark soy sauce. Saute for another two to three minutes. Combine the tofu and the peanuts together. Finally chop a few sticks of green onion. Thinly slice some fresh ginger. Toppings ready. Generously plate the kanji. Garnish with the ginger, tofu crumble, and peanuts. Green onions, a dash of soy sauce if desired. Last but certainly not least, the delicious incredibly smoky and aromatic chili oil. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check this out, make this really easily at home. You can now enjoy this childhood classic with absolute confidence. 
I dry 350 grams of extra firm tofu and place in a bowl. Use a fork to completely mash the tofu into a crumble. Two pieces of garlic, finely chopped. Two small pieces of ginger, finely chopped. Four sticks of green onion, finely chopped. Set aside some green onion for garnish. I usually like to make a big batch of dumplings because everything's already set up, but of course you can make more or less depending on how many dumplings you like to make. I'm just gonna use these store-bought dumpling wrappers today, but of course, if you'd like to learn how to make these from scratch, I'll leave a link in the description box below leading to a previous episode where we make the dumpling wrappers from scratch as well. Really quite easy, but of course it is very time consuming. So definitely not a bad thing to have these on hand. Non-stick pan. Medium heat. Three tablespoons avocado oil. Garlic ginger and green onions. Saute for two to three minutes. Tofu crumble. Saute for five to seven minutes. One tablespoon soy sauce. Three teaspoons dark soy sauce. Saute for another two to three minutes. Transfer the crumble into a bowl. One tablespoon potato starch. Roughly chop 100 grams water chestnuts. Transfer the water chestnuts to the bowl and mix well with a spoon.
push the mixture to the sides of the bowl and let it cool for 8 to 10 minutes. It's crucial that you wait for the mixture to cool completely before wrapping them in the dumpling wrappers. But that is basically the hard part done. Super, super easy. And if you love super easy recipes like I do, then definitely check out the Vegan Ramen Cookbook and the Cook with Confidence Cookbook that has most of the favorite recipes from the cooking show here on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check these out, take a sneak peek inside the book, and of course, order your signed copy. Let's fill those dumplings. Half a cup of water and a baking tray lined with parchment paper ready. Scoop a generous teaspoon worth of mixture onto the wrapper. Use your fingers to compress the filling. Spread a little bit of water around the filling and begin pleating the dumpling. Repeat to make the rest of the dumplings. You know, I was in Hong Kong a little while ago and I was at a restaurant where I was just watching these guys fill and pleat these dumplings and man, they were so fast. I mean, this dude could probably fill and pleat eight or 10 dumplings at the time that I could do one. Just incredible. So if it's not perfect the first time, definitely don't worry about it. Right, so for freezing, leave them on the tray and freeze them in the freezer as is. So this way they're not touching each other. It'll prevent any sort of sticking. And afterwards, put them in a freezer bag or a container or something like that. You just have to cook it a couple minutes more if you're cooking straight from frozen. But definitely don't throw all of them raw like this into a bag or a container and then put them in the freezer because that will risk them sticking together. So definitely leave them on a tray to freeze. Bring a small pot of water to boil for the dumplings. So of course the main event is this amazing smoky chili oil that I always have on hand and I absolutely love. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check this out and make this really easily at home. I mean, just look how ruby red this is. Just incredible. Two tablespoons chili oil. One teaspoon soy sauce. One teaspoon black rice vinegar. 
mix. Boil the dumplings for three to four minutes. Couple more minutes if cooking from frozen. Plate. And this, of course, is the best part. Spoon over the delicious sauce. Garnish with green onions. You can now enjoy these chili oil dumplings with absolute confidence. Scoop out half a cup of coconut cream and set aside. One hundred grams extra from tofu. Mash the tofu with a fork to create a crumble. I'm gonna use these fresh shiitake mushrooms. They're gonna be absolutely delicious and will add a lot of really nice kind of umami flavor in the topping. Three large shiitake mushrooms, finely chopped. grams of broccolini, finely chopped. Ramen bowl. One teaspoon cane sugar. Splash of toasted sesame oil. This is an amazing, smoky, delicious chili oil I made in a previous episode. It's so easy to make this at home and I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can make this exact chili oil at home as well. One tablespoon chili oil. One and a half tablespoon soy sauce. One tablespoon white sesame paste. Whisk to combine. Cook the ramen noodles to package instructions. In this case, four minutes. Stir around the noodles occasionally to keep them from sticking. Strain out the noodles and set it aside. Add a splash of toasted sesame oil to the noodles and toss. Just gonna heat up this veggie stock I made in a previous episode. I'll also leave a link for this so that you can make this veggie stock really easily at home as well. Just gonna use that same pot. Two and a half cups veggie stock. Coconut cream. Medium high heat. Whisk to combine. Non-stick pan. Medium heat. Two tablespoons avocado oil. 
Saute the tofu for two to three minutes. Mushrooms and broccoli. Saute for two to three minutes. One teaspoon soy sauce. Two teaspoons dark soy sauce. Saute for another minute and it's done. When the broth comes to a boil, transfer it to the ramen bowl. Place the noodles into the ramen bowl, followed by the sautéed veg. Garnish with some chili threads. Finish with another tablespoon of chili oil. That is phenomenal. If you can get that cream texture just right, that oil will actually just sit on top of that cream. And the oil you're literally just painting with that chili oil is just amazing. You can now enjoy one of my favorite dishes of all time with absolute confidence. This bowl of ramen will literally change your life. That is just incredible. Mm. You will not believe the complex flavor of this bowl of ramen is just out of this world. When the noodles are delicious, they're perfectly cooked, it has that really nice elasticity. And then you have that incredibly delicious, luscious, full-bodied broth that literally just took minutes to make. And it's just so velvety and rich and has that kind of nuttiness from the sesame paste and the saltiness from the soy sauce, the a little bit of a sweetness from the cane sugar. And of course you have that delicious smokiness and that little bit of a spiciness from the chili oil. It almost feels wrong to be able to make this in such a short amount of time and that broth is literally just delicious. And then you have the delicious toppings that just adds that complementary kind of texture. You have the velvetiness from the broth, but then you have that crunchiness from the seared tofu and the meatiness of the tofu as well as the shiitake mushrooms and the shiitake mushrooms add that delicious umami flavor to this whole bowl of ramen all the flavors in this bowl of ramen just makes really good friends with each other and of course the dry chili threads it really is that extra touch that makes it look restaurant class try some of that broth My goodness, <laughs> that is just, I can't even find the words. That is just amazing. This is really just a spectacular bowl of ramen that you must promise me you will make. And if this bowl of ramen does literally change your life, then definitely check out that vegan ramen cookbook or the brand new cook with confidence cookbook. I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check these out. Plus in that same link, you can also watch the entire first class of that sushi making masterclass. And that is a five class series designed and curated to help you make delicious and stunning sushi right at home. That is the masterclass. I always say that you'll really eat up. 
As always, remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next episode.